Hi, I'm Monsignor Jamie, and on today's episode of Breaking Bread, I will show you how cooking not only brings people together, but brings generations and continents together. So don't go away. Welcome back to Breaking Bread. I'm Monsignor Jamie, and today's special guest is Rosella Rago. She's the author of Cooking with Nona. Rosella. Hi, Monsignor. Thank How you for you? having me. Thank you for being here. Now, you have a, a, you're a young person, and you have a sort great of. history. <laughs> so tell me, you're an author of a book, you have a web show, you've also been on the Food Network? Yeah, uh, that was a long time ago now, it seems. Um, it was about 10 years ago, and... Uh, when did you start, when you were 12? <laughs> You're very kind. <laughs> um, no, I actually started cooking with Nona in uh, 2009, so it's almost we're almost at our 10-year anniversary, wow. which is really exciting. And it just started as kind of a, a joke while I was studying to be an Italian teacher at St. John's University. I was living with my nonna in uh, Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, where I'm from, and um, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with my life. You know, I loved teaching, but I, I just don't think that it was in me to do it forever. I knew it wasn't something that was, that was my forever job. One night my dad says to me, you know, what do you really want to do with your life? Because your mother and I, we look at you and we don't think that this is for you, teaching. So I just laughed one day and I said, I want to I wanna host a cooking show because that's the, the coolest job wow. in the world. Now, right? 10 years ago, cooking shows were becoming very popular. They were, but not on the web as much. It right. was kind of at the dawn of that whole YouTube era. Yes. Yes. You know, there was no Instagram when I started. Right. There was only Twitter and kind of Facebook, but nobody was their own, was, was a content creator right. on their own. So we both laughed about that. A week later, he bought the web domain cookingwithnona.com and and then uh, he built a set for me to cook on, and then- And your you know, dad did all this? My dad did all this, wow. my dad Vito, yeah. And then, you know, the rest is history. So now, what did you do first? Did you write the book first, or did you go to Nona to get some recipes? Did you, so, what did you do first? For the first, like, eight years or so, I was just learning from my Nona because I lived with her, and the most important thing, I think, is to watch people right. cook and to just be there and absorb as much as you can through osmosis. I think that's super important. And I started writing things down, which is really important because every no-no that I've ever met measures things in like espresso exactly. cups and... When you ask them for the recipe, ah, I have no recipe. They I don't know. All of this, and you have to watch. And yes. while they're doing it, you have to write it down. But even then, it's not the same because you have to feel the texture, you have to really get everything yes. right. You have to feel cooking. Right. You exactly. can't you can't just write something down, look at it, look read a recipe. You have to really uh, be invested in what you're doing. So I think you know Writing the stuff down partnered with the, the fact that I did watch so much and I knew like that looks like half a cup, you know. I really got a knack for nailing down what the nonna were all trying to make. And so I figured that if I want to preserve my, my traditional family recipes, there must be other people that want to preserve their traditional family recipes. So I started inviting different nonnas on my show to cook with me, to make a traditional recipe with me, and um, interviewing them because these ladies Ladies are really the heroines of the culinary yes. world, as far as I can see it. And uh, I think they're just these ordinary people that lived extraordinary lives. And I was just so passionate about really paying homage to these ladies, saying thank you. Thank right. you for being the cornerstones of our family. Thank you for, uh, for raising us, for nurturing right. us, for feeding us. It makes us who we are. It definitely, my relationship with my nonna made me who I am. That's great, and cooking brought that all together. Yes, and so eight years later, I amassed a really wonderful Facebook following. I'm very, very grateful to God for that because it really did open so many doors for me. And uh, lo and behold, one woman was following me on Facebook and she was the editor of, a uh, senior editor at Race Point Publishing. And one day she just sent me a message and she's like, do you want to write a book? I think Cooking with Nona needs to be a book. And wow. uh, yeah. 
it happened like that. I'm sure like when that. you got that call, your heart probably stopped for a minute. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> what, what, I mean, is it time? Is it finally time to write a book? Uh, it was time to write a book. And in March of 2017, we published uh, Cooking with Nonna, the first book, Celebrate Food and Family with over 100 recipes for your Italian table. And in October of this year of October of uh, 2018, we're publishing Cooking with Nona Holidays, which is my oh, nice. second cookbook. Oh, that's great. And like you said, this, this is a tribute to all of the Nonas that we have. Yes. I mean, because, I mean, when you think about it, they sacrificed so much. They had very little. Absolutely. And the way of, you know, really showing their children and how much they loved them and how much they meant to, they put a lot of time and effort Absolutely. into cooking. Yeah. And they had nothing to work with. And they put a lot of love into that. And that's why it's such a great honor to them. I think you're, you're doing a great job. And now we're, you're preserving recipes. Thank because you. like you said, they don't write them down. And if we don't write them down, all those delicious recipes are gonna die. It's amazing when you go to restaurants now, you see some uh, items on the, on the menu that you had when you were a kid. Mm -hmm. And now they're on, <laughs> on they the menu. They make a comeback. Exactly, <laughs> because it's good food. It's yes. good, it, you know, it, it's, uh, Comfort food, it's good food, and it brings you back to your childhood too. Yeah, I mean, and I'm not, I'm not fancy, you know. I'm just the chick from Brooklyn. <laughs> I li I, my parents are from Puglia, both of them. Okay. They came in the very last wave of immigration, right. and my mother was fortunate enough to stay home with us, and she cooked every single day. Wow. She cooked every single day something simple. I know. And my game is simplicity. I don't try and be fancy. I just try and document the simplest recipes because that's what I believe people want to eat every exactly. day. And you said it, they cooked every day. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's what's missing in society. People don't cook. I understand mothers are working. We don't have, you know, two parents at home and it's convenient to order out. But really cooking is the key because it brings Absolutely. the family together. You know, you have time, you take some time to talk and even preparing the meal. If the kids come home from school and you're cooking, you're, you're talking while you're cooking. Mm -hmm. you're, you're passing on a recipe. You, they tell stories of, you know, their grandparents and their parents and, you know, why they're cooking this, how they did. All those things come together around the meal. It's so important to see someone cooking. Yes. Kids are not seeing people right. cook anymore, so they don't want to cook. Right. But since, you know, I got to see my mom cook, I got to see my nonna cook in that time I was with her, it really showed me a wonderful example of how to live life. Uh, right. These are things that you should be doing. So I think cooking is something that brings people together. It feeds your stomach, it feeds your soul. Exactly. And it, it just makes you so much more aware of what we put in our, in our bodies, which is really important. That's great. Okay, thank you very much. Don't go away. I think we're gonna see a few recipes from the book and we may even have a special guest. Nona may even be here. Don't go away. Welcome back to Breaking Bread, and today we have with us Rosella, author of Cooking with Nona. And I think Nona's in the area, so. Yeah, you know, she, ha she has a very busy schedule, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I was able to get her for this special segment today. Oh, that's wonderful, yes. that's great. Can we so, gonna bring her in? Nona. Okay, I want it. Nona, how are you? This is Nona yeah. Romana, my nice Nona. Nice to meet you. Yeah, Mi casa, su casa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're right. Nonna, say hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. Now, these are some of these recipes in the book. Are all the recipes in the book yours? Well, almost. Almost, almost. Yeah. The book yeah. actually has recipes from 25 different nonna. Oh, wow. But you're yeah. the one that really inspired yeah. She's Rosella. Beyonce. Okay. She, she's the number one. <laughs> now, I know these are just a few of the dishes that are in the book. What do we have here now? Now, eh, orecchiette e broccoli rape. Okay, the orecchiette, the ears, right? The... Yeah. I remember as a kid. <laughs> Yeah, hey, uh, the color I get <laughs> look like here. <laughs> okay, and here yeah. you made the dough. Yeah. And what's in the dough? Just a semolina and water. That's it. No salt, nothing. No it's salt, no way. So in the in the south of Italy, right. there are shortcuts of pasta primarily, mm -hmm. and it's only made with a dough made out of semolina flour and water. So in the north of Italy, you'll see pappardelle, tagliatelle, uh, sheets so of lasagna. So you say shortcuts, not the ingredients, but the the shape yes, of the pasta. The short. Cuts. So they're they're cut short. Yes. All right. You want eggs in the northern pasta doughs because you want more structure. 
So it holds it together. Yes, exactly. Oh, okay. So filled pastas. But in the south, they're not too big on the filled pastas or anything. The two most famous cuts of southern Italy are orecchietta and cavatelli. Right, the little, right, yes. exactly. Now they're both made from the same dough. Both from the same dough. Okay. And orecchietta are, is, uh, is the most uh, iconic pasta shape from Puglia, where right. our family is right. from. Right. My grandparents, my mother's side, are from that area also, Bari. Maybe mm -hmm. we knew each other. Castellan. Then, no, yeah. Castellan, yes. it's very close. Now, this yeah. is semolina flour yes. and water. Now, how is semolina flour a little different than so white flour? This is actually something called semolina rimacinata. Rimacinata means ground again. So this is a little bit finer than semolina that you would buy at a, a store. Little more coarse. Yeah, well, uh, semolina, regular semolina is a bit coarse. This is technically a bread flour. And when I teach pasta making, uh, I try and get people to start out, if you've never made pasta before, to start out with rimacinata because it is a little bit finer and it kind of melts together better and quicker okay. with the water. And it becomes a nice supple dough faster than and working the, the coarse semolina. Okay, so let's uh, let's see uh, Nona make some yeah. of this. Yeah. So you make a ball of dough, and then you got to roll it into a little snake. So that she's strip. been kneading that dough. Yeah, she's been kneading this dough. Okay. Yeah. It's nice and supple now, and if you want to feel it, the texture is not too moist and not too dry. Right, right. It's kind of the texture. Like Play-Doh. Yes, Play -Doh. exactly. <laughs> It's okay. not important to bake a pasta like that, because you, you make too soft. You can make no. orecchiette, no. It sticks. Yeah. So you now know. you make it almost like a gnocchi, too. You roll it out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that's the trick. Now this knife, is this a special knife? This is yeah, kind of a special, special knife. knife. These are called the nonna knives. So I yeah. import these knives from Italy. Everybody that goes to Italy usually will bring back a pack of this that you would get at the, the mercato or the, the marketplace. Mm -hmm. They're very, very affordable, but they make the best pasta. But it makes, so I see she's inverting it once yes. she rolls it out so that all of the indentations are on the outside, yeah, that exactly. absorbs the sauce. That's very important. Wow. Yeah, very good. Very okay, good. no, now let me try one. Oh, let okay, me try, try. one. <laughs> we'll cut one off. Right? And you want to keep the blade away from you. Apply oh. pressure with your index finger. And pull toward, very good. Oh. And now you, you got to flip then, it over the thumb. Then you invert it. Okay, not bad for the first one. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, and you gotta, sure. Once oh, you get the you hang of it, it. Okay, it's very therapeutic. All right, mm. very nice. I try one more, and otherwise, then I get fired. <laughs> and then, yeah. Okay. That okay. one's very nice. All right. Not too, <laughs> not too bad. Not too good. Not too bad. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. <laughs> now, Nona, tell me, do you teach uh, your children? I mean, the generation today, they don't cook like this, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I told all the. The new generation, I say, you supposed to learn cook because when you marry, the more you save for buy for restaurant that cost a lot of money, right? You gotta have a house. So it's easy. It's <laughs> exactly. cheaper to cook in, so you can save the yeah. money to buy the house yeah. rather than making reservations because or going out to eat. You cook every day. You <laughs> save a lot of money, and you supposed to buy a house when you marry. Uh, no, well, words I think there's a lot of people when today may said not agree. That they left, left, <laughs> but you're, you're right on. That's what's missing <laughs> oh, today. Yeah. These are so the now, old values. Right. That's true. Mm -hmm. So now, we make the orecchietti. Now, what type of dish are we making here today? So today we're making the most iconic pasta dish from the region of Puglia, and we're making orecchiette with broccoli rabe. Okay, so you made that together. Yes, so here I have some broccoli rabe that I boiled with the orecchiette, which is a very important southern Italian cooking technique. Okay. You want to boil the pasta with the vegetables. So together. The, yes, so the water becomes infused with the flavor of the vegetables, and it, it infuses the pasta with the flavor so of the vegetables. So it all blends together. Yes, and then we're just going to do some super easy right in that pan. So I'm going to make a little uh, sauce here, a little olive oil. Yeah. Extra virgin. Always extra virgin. Tell me when. Go ahead. Of course, you have to coat all that pasta. Yeah. OK. There you go. I think that's enough. That's enough. Nona said, that's enough, that's enough. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A little garlic. A little garlic. I like garlic. Who doesn't love garlic? Okay. And a little red pepper, a little bit of red pepper, A little please. crushed red pepper? Okay. As strong as you like it. I like it strong. Go ahead. Okay, a bast. 
Very nice. Okay. And then our little secret ingredient is this is gonna be our anchovy fillets. Now uh -huh. you you might get some people that are not too crazy about that. They're like, I don't eat anchovies, but I will say that this will not have the flavor of anchovies. This is just gonna be that little extra, that little like, hmm, right. what is that? Because once they melt down, you can't see them. You just have that great flavor. That's that it. I don't like us. to eat anchovies, but I like the taste mm -hmm. in the food. If it's not too exactly. overpowering. Yes. So you when should we throw this in? What's the garlic? Browns a little bit. I'll go over there. Yes, no, just no. as soon as it turns a little bit golden, you want to drop an anchovy in. Okay. One or two, as, as much as you like. And you're going to get a nice little crack, snap, crackle, and pop over there. Okay. And the smell is so intoxicating. Wow. There is no smell like garlic sauteing. And now that Garlic is browning rapidly. Yep, and now we're just gonna throw in. The... We're gonna put the pasta yes. in. Yes, yeah, we put. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes, we put, we put, we put. Ah, you put, Now, a lot of people would have put the sauce right on top of the pasta, but we put the pasta right into the dish. No, that, into is, the pot. that is one of the 10 commandments yes. <laughs> of cooking pasta, uh, is that you should cook the pasta and always finish it in a sauce. Because I like to think that when you pull pasta out of pasta water, there are those magical 10 seconds where all the pasta pores, pasta has no pores, I made that up, but all the <laughs> pores are open and it can really absorb all the flavors of a sauce. And also that, you know, you're putting the pasta, the pan has the flavors in it yes. too. So you want to absorb all the flavors from the pan Absolutely. as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you want to pull your pasta out of the pan when it's a little bit more than al dente. I like to use the term al paco. That means for, like right out of the pack. Okay. So because it's going to cook a little bit. Totally. No, we're going to add a little more, uh, a little more um, olive oil or no? You can if you like, but as long as you feel like it's nice and, and coated well, you can put another drop right at the end so you have yeah. that nice raw extra virgin yes. olive oil flavor. Okay, we're gonna take a break right now. We'll come back and taste some of these recipes, okay? Okay. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll taste this orecchietti with broccoli rab, and we have a couple other dishes we like to taste. See you then. Welcome back to Breaking Bread, and we're here with Rosella from Cooking with Nona, and Nona's here with us today, and we're gonna try some of this orecchietti with broccoli rab. Yeah. Okay, sure. so let's try it. How do you think, Nona? He do good? Oh, yeah. There I didn't do anything. You did everything. <laughs> yeah. Mm, so good. Excellent. Mm -hmm. A little spicy. Very good. And I tell you, you don't even taste the anchovy. Yeah, it's not so There's a flavor there, but it's not overpowering. It's subtle. And the pasta yeah. is just al dente. Very good. I love it. Uh, even the broccoli wrap, a little al dente, they, they give a nice taste, very good. And it's hard to believe, just flour, mm -hmm. semolina flour, and water. That's it? Yeah. And tender, loving care. That's the key. Yeah, and yeah. The tender, lo <laughs> and more important, hands. More important to do like that. Exactly, yeah. not That's in the machine. No, nah, no, nah, not no. today. Now, you have some other recipes from the book. What's this? This is a so these are some pizza other focaccia? Classic Pugliese dishes. This is a focaccia alla barese. What makes it a focaccia alla barese is its classic topping of just a little oregano and some tomatoes and salt. That's okay. it. Different. I remember when I was a kid, unfortunately, my grandparents were dead before I was like three years uh -huh. old. So I really never had, and that's why this is so special to me. But I remember my aunt making the focaccia and I would say, I don't like that. There's no cheese. There's no tomato <laughs> sauce. I don't like this pizza. But a really traditional mm -hmm. focaccia. So what I would love to taste that. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, this is, really good. this is something that we make every Sunday. I, I always joke that this was like my aromatic alarm okay. clock. Is it pizza Sunday dough mornings. or it's made with potato or? Some people put potatoes in right. it. Very, very astute uh, observation. Okay. Other people don't. It's just a, a basic yeast dough. It's not quite pizza dough because pizza Let's dough wouldn't puff up like that. I'm getting hungry looking at it. 
Here you go. Okay. And then we have some zucchine alla poverella. So zucchini, this, okay. These are a classic that uh, are made throughout southern Italy. In Napoli, they call them zucchini alla scapeccia. We in Puglia call them zucchini alla poverella. They mean peasant style zucchini. And they're just fried zucchini coins tossed with some red wine vinegar, garlic, and mint. That's it. Beautiful, clean it's flavors. It's a traditional dish. You get it in some restaurants, not too many. If you go to some of the real Italian restaurants. The ones that know. Yes, exactly. And in Italy, when you go to Italy and you go to you know the restaurants, they have all the different appetizers. Yes. And you're full before you eat anything. You know? Now, what about putting a little bit of that zucchini on the pizza? That's on the a focaccia? very. That's a, now, you're now you're thinking. I like to eat. Yeah. I like put, to cook, but I like to eat. Put a little mm -hmm. bit, just a couple of them, right on top. And this is served cold. Ooh, yes, yeah. served cold. Oh, good, Room temperature or cold. You this can't go wrong. antipasto they call antipasto. it. Antipasto. Antipasto. Zucchini antipasto. Very good. Mm. What do you think? It's heavenly. <laughs> <laughs> Pun intended. Mm. This is my type of cooking. This is my type of food. Mm -hmm. This book, I'm gonna go through that book recipe by recipe. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. So now tell me, You're Rosella. Welcome. Yes. This is one aspect of what you do. Yes. You were on the Food Network. I was, yes, many and you, moons ago. you were in a competition. Which show was that? Oh boy, we were on a show called uh, 24 Hour Restaurant Battle, and it was me, my mother, and Nonna, and we had 24 three hours, three generations, <laughs> had 24 hours to, uh, to uh, conceive a restaurant concept, to build it out, to uh, cook all the food, prep and cook all the in food. In 24 hours. In 24 hours, and serve 100 people, and we were against another team. And um, we won, uh, we, we emerged victorious. And the other team famously said, uh, they had a loaded gun and her name was Nona. Wow. So uh, we, <laughs> we were all freaking out, like, oh my God, oh my God. And it's like, we had Nona, what were we worried about? <laughs> wow, that's great. Now, what about on the uh, social media? You have a show? Yes, well, uh, I have a, a show on YouTube, YouTube? Uh, okay. Cooking with Nona on YouTube. And uh, my, How many followers do you have? Well, we have a pretty extensive social media following. Uh, my biggest platform is, of course, Facebook, and we have over almost 700,000 Facebook wow. followers that uh, love and care and comment on Cooking with Nona, so it's really incredible so to see So all your recipes, you, you know, you, you put on different recipes and dishes on there? All my recipes are on www.cookingwithnona.com, and okay. there you can find all the links to my social media platforms, as well as links to my culinary tours in Italy. Okay, now I want to talk about that. So you do tours, and you yes. visit different regions, and you go to the, the diff different types of cooking. Mm -hmm. and you should come. Yes, I would, will, I would love to. So we do two culinary tours. We do uh, the Amalfi Coast, and we do Puglia, so we spend a week in each uh, in each region and uh, we stay uh, usually in a villa together and we cook together we take lessons from local nonnas we go to wineries and uh, mozzarella wow. mozzarella farms and we make limoncello what I'm really proud of is that we go to Mola di Bari where I'm from and we see a festa patronale wow we see the feast of our, our lady of sorrows of la Madonna Dolorata sure sure and, we and you know there's them. a couple of societies here in Brooklyn absolutely and our bishop is some Mola di Body. Yes, he is. And uh, he's going to be on our show. <laughs> oh my and, God, you know, so maybe, funny. you know, we can incorporate. You know, I have a lot of followers, too. Not as many as you do. No, I but can, maybe I can have some of my followers are. come on some of these tours. And I maybe I can come as the chaplain. You can if feed you the stomach, like I'll feed the soul. Absolutely. <laughs> High five. <laughs> and we'll bring Nona again, around yeah. with us. Yeah. But I want to thank you. Um, we'll put all the information on your website and everything available. The book, the cooking book, Cooking with Nona. And... Um, we will mm -hmm. really, I think after this show, you're going to see a little rise in sales. Wow, I hope so. Thank but, you. Nona, thank you very much. Oh, so God thank bless you. you. God bless I you too. appreciate all that you thank do. Thank you very much. And for God you. bless you. And you have good advice for the next generation. Cook at home. Yeah, yeah. Around the table. Yeah, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this show as much as I did today. It was all about family. And today, it was truly a great show for me. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. We'll see you next time on Breaking Bread when we bring food, faith, and family together. On today's episode of Breaking Bread, we saw how Rosella's relationship with her Nona, her grandmother, was strengthened by food and recipes, by coming together and preparing food and preserving some of those recipes that maybe would have died off. She strengthened her relationship with others. And in her book, she brought so many young people together with their grandmothers, their Nonas, to sit down and prepare a recipe to talk about the old country and how they were when they were growing up. That's what this show was all about, 
to remind us that when we come together to prepare a meal, we not only prepare a meal to feed our stomachs, but we strengthen those relationships. We connect with those people that we love so very much. When you have some free time, get together with family members and friends, prepare a meal, and maybe strengthen your relationship. That's what Breaking Bread is all about. See you next time.